Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show. I'm your host Eunice Malat. I had a chance to interview a young man by the name of Kwang Dolwoning. He started an organization called the Omaha Talents Academy. And the academy is a basketball organization that prevents kids from going ahead and joining gangs, selling drugs, and also participating in other negative activities. What he does is he has a two days a week training session with kids. It doesn't matter what age they are as long as they're below 18. And he teaches them how to play basketball, advises them, and really sort of distracts them from you know, going out into the streets and venturing into um, really uh, unchattered territory that might not be beneficial to them. He also holds an annual um, basketball tournament whereby teams from across different states within the U.S. come and join and compete uh, with his organization. So I had a chance to interview him, but also we also filmed uh, the event itself the tournament whereby other teams came from different areas. So here is uh, the event and the interview with Kwang Deloney. We have with us here Kwang Deloney, founder of the Oma Talents Academy. We thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's um, a pleasure. You're welcome, you're welcome. So tell us about the Talents Academy and uh, what caused you to actually found it? Uh, well, uh, the Talents Academy is a community initiative. Um, I mean, me and a group of guys uh, pretty much just having passion to want to give back to our community, you know, wanting to see how we can serve uh, some of the youth here in, Om in, in the Sudanese community here in Omaha. You know, so that, that was the basic idea behind it, you know, and then everything just kind of took off and it branched to what it is today. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes, yes. Now I know that you guys just had the second annual basketball tournament we did. here in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. There's such a great turnout and it yeah. was it's such a positive environment. And I know that it was a two-day event. Right. Tell us about that. Uh, well, uh, like you said, second annual. Uh, last year, um, we really, we really wasn't expecting it to be what it is today. Uh, last year, we really just wanted to do, a uh, number of our guys were working out, training with us for over a year. You know, really not getting the exposure to where their parents wouldn't really get the, the chance to see what their kids were working on. And the guys were in opportunity, you know, to really showcase some of their skills was a little limited. You know, so last year we set out to do a basketball tournament just to kind of you know, empower the youth, you know, and, and, and kind of show them the results of hard work and, and to expose uh, kind of who we are to, to the community. And for, I mean, it just blew up last year, you know, and, and, you know, so trying to ride that momentum, you know, take it into the second year, you know, and hopefully going on to the third where we can grow, you know, and be able to add more. Yes. Um, it's pretty much the idea behind it right now, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm looking forward to it, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what drew you to basketball? You could have been a soccer player or got into <laughs> hockey, you know? Well, uh, I'm 6'7", you know, 6'7", 6'8". Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad is actually probably around 6'9". Wow. And I actually was a big soccer player going into high school. You know, and then growing up in South Omaha, a lot of the guys, uh, I mean, all we did, all we had was the YMCA. You know, so literally, uh, I would go to the Y, start out, I would go to the Y and I would kick the soccer ball around, you know, and, and nobody would play with me, everybody would be running up and down playing basketball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I began, you know, to, to, you know, every now and then I will pick up a basketball and play with them. Mm -hmm. And I just got better, you know, I got a lot better at it, you know, and the, the better I got, the more passion I got for the game, you know, to where basketball led me to, you know, become one of the best players here out of my senior year of high school. Wow. You know, and then going on to play Indiana State University, you uh -huh. know, which which is where I earned my college degree. Uh-huh. So Wow, so basketball sort of helped you right. get into school, get into college right. and stuff and graduating. <laughs> so you got a scholarship to go to college? I did. Okay. I did. Uh full ride. Wow. To, to go play division one. Uh -huh. You know, which is, you know, coming from where I'm coming from, South South Omaha. Yeah. Um 
I mean, we always kind of hoped, you know, we always kind of dreamed of maybe playing, you know, college basketball on the big stage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but but it, it, it became surreal for me when I actually got the chance, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just, I mean, it just taught me really um, what hard work looked like, you know, what, what, what can really happen when you dedicate your time mm -hmm. and your energy into becoming better at something. How old were you when you came here? I was nine. Oh, United Yeah, well, my family moved there in 1999. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we stayed in Rochester, New York for about six months. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we ended up moving here because of the, the low living conditions and because of, uh, you know, just, just the desire for my parents to feel a little bit more at home, mm -hmm. you know, around, around their people a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and you know, we're talking about like, you know, our kids, uh, South Sudanese kids, and just minority kids in general, you know, the temptation of trying to join gangs and stuff is there, you know, when they look at their parents, they're like, oh man, you're African, you know, what do you know and stuff, you know? I right. mean, what kept you away from getting into that? Uh, I mean, I, I would say, you know, even growing up, I was always somewhat, you know, the weird kid that really couldn't, you know, I mean, I, I really couldn't fit in, you know, as far as really, you know, really, really enjoying what I saw around me mm -hmm. or, or even, I don't know. You know, I would just say that there's just always been something within me that, that motivated me to do certain things a different way. You know, and, and I would say, I mean, I, I was around it a lot of times. Um, I just never entertained it. You know, it never, it never got to the point to where, you know, I thought it was reasonable. What were some of the specific things that you were exposed to? Uh, well, I mean, when I was growing up, you know, our community, and this is what I'm becoming begin, begin to understand is that um, we always do what kind of like the, the generation before us are doing. You know, the guys that were a couple years older than me, uh, my older cousins, you know, their friends, I was around them a lot, you know, to where, to where a lot of times I was caught up doing what they were doing, you know. And that was right around the time that uh, as far as gangs began to rise, uh, as far as um, the party culture you know, nightclubs, you know, and, and wanting to go out and, and stay out all night. That's when that began to happen. And that was right around the time when, you know, I mean, at a younger age, uh, guys and girls started drinking, you know. And, and for me, I, I would say one, um, by that time I was very highly motivated to, to become a good basketball player, which, uh, I mean, a lot of times I had to go to bed when, you know, by, by 9 o'clock because I wanted to wake up feeling good in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, so that kept me away from a lot of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, just, just running to the right people, you mm -hmm. know, that gave me the right uh, right information mm -hmm. and the right advice, you know, and, and I took on and I ran with that. Mm -hmm. That know. is excellent. Uh, that is truly really excellent. You uh, know. Yes. Now you studied the Talents Basketball Academy. Mm -hmm. Now the skills that you've attained, how do you believe can help the kids that are in your academy? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, everybody got to make their own decisions. Um, you know, I think with, with any sports in general, you know, I think there's a lot of skills, basic life skills that, that everybody needs, you know, that, that I think uh, a lot of these guys who don't have the opportunity at home, you know, or, or around their friends uh, to pick up, you know, things like, you know, ability to focus, you know, and, and, and you know, for a younger kid, it's really hard to sit there and, and, and listen, you know, and try to observe information and do it, you know, follow direction exactly how you're told. Uh, in basketball, you kind of have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, things like, you know, teamwork, mm -hmm. you know, working together with a group of guys, you know, and, and the better you work together, you know, the, the more productive everybody's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, basketball has uh, the ability to teach that, you know, things like, you know, just just hard work and discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you know, really just just character building issues that because they want to be good basketball players, mm -hmm. you know, they have to understand them. Exactly. You know, and and those are things that once they get, I got them through basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, once they get them through basketball, they're going to translate to every single area of life. So basketball so. is not all about dribbling the ball and shooting, you know? <laughs> no, nah, definitely not. Because people are like, man, I can do that in my sleep. That's nothing, you know? <laughs> no, nah, definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, 
I mean, just just like anything, if you want to become good at it, mm -hmm. uh, it takes a little extra, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And and you know, these guys really have a strong passion for basketball. Yeah. You know, I want to give them the tools to be successful in that. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, um, you know, brightening their their perception a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. teasing them things that. Um, that, that, that a lot of kids from our community don't get the chance to, to, to learn. So how often during the week do you have like practice sessions with the kids? Um, we practice two days out of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, we go Mondays and Fridays from, yeah. from 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. So I mean it, it, it totals out to about four hours. Mm -hmm. um, we're really hoping, you know, right now OPS is helping us out a ton, you know, with being able to allow us access and, and Omaha North High School, of course, uh, to use their facilities. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're hoping here, you know, once I get a little more time in my hands, uh, once we get a couple more volunteers uh, to come in there and actually help us out, we're open to maybe expand, you know, to maybe three times a week, you know, and have a chance to possibly, you know, instead of just having uh, sessions in North Omaha, we can have one in South Omaha, you know, and a lot of those kids can, can be easily, uh, they can have access, you know, and they can find transportation there, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good, very yeah. good, yes. So, uh, what's the way that people can go ahead and donate to your organization and uh, provide uh, money? Well, uh, right now, checks can be written out to Omaha Talents. Mm -hmm. um, we are working with a nonprofit uh, called New Life Family Alliance, mm -hmm. and that's an organization that I also, you know, I helped build, you know, and, and, and I did a lot of the groundwork to, to, to making that into fruition. Mm -hmm. um, Checks, uh, I mean, donated checks can go to, to New Life Family Alliance, and they are, they will be tax deductible, yeah. 501c3. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, anything else, uh, I mean, just contact me, you mm -hmm. know, contact, I mean, we do have a Facebook page, uh, yes. we do have a Twitter, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then. It's the Omaha Talents Academy. Omaha Talents Academy. Oh, yeah. Go. Wearing this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta represent, right? Right, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, yeah. really thank you for coming on here and talking to us about the great work that you're doing. Right. You know, you're just one of the unsung heroes in our community, <laughs> you know, that we need to highlight and appreciate. Oh, you know? it's too kind. No, no, no. You know, because you're really impacting the lives of many of our young boys. Yeah. And then we're really grateful for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I mean, it, it definitely feels good to, you know, to, to see progress. Yes. Um, you know, and, and you're also doing a lot, you know, so it's a pleasure oh, uh, being you. on the show. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. For sure. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kun Cho. Uh, I'm 15 years old and I'm going to be a sophomore in high school. I started playing basketball in fifth grade and that's because I used to play soccer but the school I went to didn't have a soccer team so I started playing basketball and one time after basketball practice for school one of my friends told me about this program and how they can help you get better so I started to come and I've been going for at least two years now it was pretty it's pretty fun they work you they help you out with what you need help you get to meet new people everything everything was all right they have tournaments like these maybe once a year it's great to play against the people you know have fun great experience and then oh, and then the competitiveness is pretty fun too DJ Mo, what's good, brother? You got something, brother? You got something, brother? Let's go! Bye! Check! Give it up for DJ Mo! And y'all need to stand up right now! I'm gonna come to y'all because I love my people. It's almost called Getaway Island, if you know it, see!
we have another trivia question, and this time I'm going to pick somebody, and they're going to come up, and they're going to give us the answer in front of everyone. So if you have stage fright, don't raise your hand. Um, the question is, when did we gain independence in South Sudan, and how? <laughs> come on, be brave. I know that it's your country, your country, your country, all of you, you guys are grown. Raise your hand. Come on up. Come on. Yeah, come up. All right, give them a round of applause. <laughs> I got a quick joke. He just showed all y'all how to be a man. One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty. All right. July 7th. We oui. to get on your pen. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yitzhak Shor, and I'm 10 years old. I go to the school in Middle Park near my house, and what got me to Kwong's uh, basketball program was my cousin Godshram, and he really inspires me because he he taught me how to do the right things and cuz i when i used to not know how to play basketball he taught me how to how to cross over under your legs and how to shoot right i like kwong because he he really helped me um uh, play in the games and he taught me how to uh, be a good sport and not whine or do any inappropriate uh, things uh, because I lost. He's the one that got me to reach my highest level of playing basketball. <laughs> My name is Gotch Ram. Uh, I am 18 years old and class of 2014. Uh, my plans are to, uh, to uh, attend Iowa Western uh, Community College uh, this upcoming fall, and I will uh, try to get an associate's degree in um, criminal justice. Uh, I'm originally from Grand Island, Nebraska, and um, came to Omaha, Nebraska in 2012, and I've been here ever since. Uh, I got introduced to Kwang Duolani and his program uh, in 2013 uh, from a friend of his and uh, a friend of his and mine. And uh, I went to his program uh, one day and uh, I practiced with the team and I got a chance to talk to Kwang and I found out that he's, he's an outstanding guy and I view him as an older brother and a, as a father, you know, in, in the same sense. Even some, some of the kids even view him as that, as a father figure if they don't have that because you know he, he's just that that person you know he can mentor you and he talks to you like he, he doesn't talk to you like he's um better than you he talks to you as an equal and that's how people should talk you know and he teaches that and 
you know, he has a lot to bring to our community, uh, not just the Sudanese community, but Omaha community. And, you know, later on, even, you know, the United States and then the world, you know. And uh, we have a lot, you know, going for us, you know, as Sudanese, you know, in America. And that's what we really need to focus on. And if we focus on that, then, um, the, you know, it'll, it'll be better for us and our community. And that's what we need to, you know, learn. But his program, it doesn't just focus on basketball. It focuses on uh, keeping kids off the streets. Like a lot of programs say that, you know, their program keeps kids off the streets and away from gangs and violence. But this program honestly does keep kids off the streets. And um, it gives them, you know, a better outlet at life, you know, a better look at life. And um, uh, it gives them, you know, good, like, perspective on their community and uh, their history. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a good way to, um, to, you know, have fun and at the same time learn a lot from a lot of great coaches and great individuals. And uh, yeah, for our community, the Sudanese community, we just need to um, just focus on what we are here for. You know, like we came here all for a reason and we can't just spit on our grandparents' uh, graves just saying that, you know, that we're here to mess around. You know, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to focus, get an education and uh, bring Africa back up again. Hi, I'm Teb Gatch, I'm 12. And the way uh, this, this program impacted me was with my life and what I've been doing around. And the way I got into this, this program was by my cousin. First, we had a, a tournament at YMCA. And when that happened, he told me that I should go and practice with them at North High. So I tried it, and when I when I started going, it was a good impact on me. I liked it so much, I kept going and have, I barely m even missed a day. And so when I, when, I go, um, when I go home, I think of what I've done and try to do work hard and do better than what I've done. So I wanna, I wanna say this, right? The reason like, uh, Julia, can you come up here please? Everybody give it up for Julia. And then one of my homies right here. Y'all make some noise for Julia, man. Make some noise for my homie right here. Make some noise. Come on, man. It's got to be louder than that. So I'm going to start with him right here. I just met him for the first time today, right? And he has this basketball tournament going on, right? Yeah. And we need more stuff like that. You guys agree, right? Yeah. It's like, if you go to a lot of South Sudanese events, it's always the same, 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 same thing. But this, this right here is something different. So I just want to shake your hands and say, thank you for what you're doing for our people and big up. Y'all give it up for him. Yeah. And we gotta save the best for last, right? You guys know that she flew all the way from San Diego, right? Just to be here with you guys to make this event happen. Y'all give it up for Julia, yo! Looking pretty like New York City. <laughs> so she called me about two or three weeks ago and she said she wanna do this thing. And I was like, alright, cool, let's do it. That's why we're here. So thank you very much for your love and support for our people. So the reason why I wanted to be a musician, right, and I was just telling her is because when I was young, I lost my father and I lost my brother. So music was like my getaway from all the pain. So when I do music, I chose to do nothing but positive music. When I mean positive music, I mean music that everybody can listen to. Your dad, your mom, your youngest sister, everybody. I want people to sit at home and just put on a dynamic music and just listen to it. And we need more of that. So everybody out there who's supporting South Sudan music, I just want to take this time out and say thank you very much and one love. I'm going to do this last song right here.
joining us on the Eunice Mala Show. We hope that you'll join us next week. Don't forget to go ahead and like us on Facebook at The Eunice Malat Show. And also send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Our email is The Eunice Malat Show at yahoo.com. See you next week. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to community that dreams and achieves. We believe in education. We give you direction to stand up tall and achieve the impossible.